let's talk about uh, the price of being a disciple and the price of being a minister. All right, so I mean price. Like literally, you're going to have to pay the price eventually. That's something important that you got to understand. So uh, let's look at the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, please. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. So you might think when I'm talking to you tonight, oh, you know, I already know this, I already know this. And it's the same old messages that we've heard before. But it's like, you know, when you read the same passage the hundredth time and then you realize, man, I can't believe I overlooked that. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's like the Lord did that with me in my life. So tonight's teaching, if you're truly saved and you truly have the Holy Spirit in you and you truly have the desire for Him and His Word, and you've been growing. Now, for those who are, I don't want you to feel bad. Like, I still don't get it, Pastor. Don't feel bad about that, okay? It's those that, but for those who have been through with God for a long time, I think you're going to understand more what I'm talking about tonight. All right, so let's talk about the price of being a disciple and the price of being a minister. So we know that there's a price. I think that's pretty obvious. We all can take that for granted, okay? So, but I want us to understand a lot more about the price of this and also how we should be very careful with our testimony for the Lord. So the key thing with being a price, a lot of things revolve, one of the most important things I heard from one preacher, which is extremely important. One thing you cannot trade for a million dollars or anything else is your testimony. That's good. That's right. Testimony is the number one thing that you... Let me say this to people online, okay? Let me say this, okay? You, ca oh, uh, you, cannot, you cannot get anything more than your testimony. I know you want something more. You want a million dollars. But let me tell you this. You cannot give up your testimony for a million dollars. That is extremely important. You're going to understand that more as you go through uh, more as a disciple and more as a minister. For now, you'll probably hear that and take it in, but when you actually experience it, you'll know it even more. Trust me, you can be a minister for 10 years and then you truly understand more and more about the price of it. So that's one thing that I learned more and more. Testimony is essential. Okay, so let's look at the book of Matthew, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and then verse 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So in order to get God's power, how many of you want God's power? Amen, amen. amen right? Amen. I'm so glad to hear that. Okay, so then if that's what you want, but for some of you who are still unsure about that and still at a baby stage where you're growing, in time I hope you understand the value of the power of God. That is worth more than anything in your entire life. That's why it's going to be related to your testimony. So the power of God through your testimony all comes down through suffering. Through tremendous suffering, we all know this. But when we actually go through it, we don't realize how much hurtful it is and how much dangerous Satan is and how much pressure it is to retain your testimony either as a disciple or a minister. So in suffering comes great power. I want to thank so many people online and so many people in this church who became a part of this ministry. Now, let me ask you these questions uh, for those online and for those who came to our church. Now, if you didn't experience this yet, praise the Lord, all right? That, uh, okay. I wish more power to you on that one, all right? I hope it doesn't happen to you, okay? But for those of you who came to our church or for those watching us online, and I've heard from some of you watching us online already, when you got involved in our church, didn't you notice how suffering started to happen all of a sudden? Just sporadically, on the moment. It's like at the perfect time when you're not ready for it. <laughs> it's like at the perfect time when you're not ready for it. Okay. Uh, 
trust me, that's one of my most number one mottos and sayings that you probably want to put as a philosophy or a book of quotes, all right? <laughs> Suffering comes at a time when you're not ready, all right? But that will really happen. I can't stress that enough. So when this happens, you've got to realize this. That's where power comes in. Now, why does power come in? It's like when you're working out. When you're working out, how do you gain more power and then you stretch more of the muscles? When you push it beyond. When you push it beyond. Now, I hope that this will be a blessing and encouragement to some of you. Amen? I really hope so. So the thing is this, is that when you're going through tremendous suffering, it's literally where you're going past this. Can I get an amen on that one for some people who went through this? Yeah, it's literally past this. So when you're past this, you got to understand this. When you're past this, this is called limitations. Now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. I'm speaking so much about myself here. Now, it's, it's so amazing when uh, Satan starts attacks, attacking my life that I see more and more how it's more about me uh -huh. rather than anything else. Not even my enemies, actually. Believe it or not, it's not even my enemies who publicly get on me. I realize more and more that it's about me. And if you would think that, then it would be so life-changing. Uh, life That's all I can say. It's so life-changing, and then you'll experience an inner peace and joy that you can't feel before. But that inner peace and joy comes past the limitation, past that extreme sorrow, past that point where you're like, God, I'll be honest with you, I'm about to give up, yeah. like that. It's literally that. Yeah. So the thing is this, is that let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are ye able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. All right, so just uh, uh, put up with me for a moment here. Put up with me for a moment. That verse is, actu is actually not true. When I go through this trial, I feel like it's not true. You know why? It's, I go past my limitation. And then Satan, he starts to put that in your ear and in your mind. And when he puts that in your mind, you got to realize this. When you are praying to the Lord and you go past this, you are not believing 1 Corinthians 10, 13, okay? All right, so just put up with me right here, okay? Don't, don't, don't unsubscribe. Hey, 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 don't unsubscribe, all right? All right? Don't walk out the door, okay? Wait, you're, you're missing the good part. Oh, I'm sorry. Some of those enemies might take five seconds of what I just said and post it online. All right. But anyways, it's amazing. Uh, I don't know why. I'm such in a good mood today. I don't know why. But <laughs> it'll be saved. Amen. You don't believe 1 Corinthians 10, 13 when you're praying to the Lord at that moment. All right. Understand that. You do not believe it. You do not believe it. But God promised you my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So he's giving you the grace to go through at that time. So here's the idea. The real truth, before you call me a heretic, the real truth is this in God, when you look outside the picture. Now look at 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Isn't this outside the picture right here? 1 Corinthians 10, 13. It's outside the picture here. This is how God sees it because that's God's word. This is God's word right here. Now, we are supposed to be the mind of Christ. Amen? Amen. So we currently have the mind of Christ right now. But the problem is, is that our flesh is incredibly weak. Our flesh is incredibly wicked, even though that in the eyes of people, it's not wicked. But the more you know about yourself, the more you realize how really wicked you are. Now, I can't tell you this enough is that when I go, 
God, man, I can't thank God enough how he used our church. I don't know why he would use a wretch like me. But let me be honest with you. This preacher is not lying. The higher I go up and the more fruits that I gain, the, reali the, the more reality I see is that I'm truly not capable for this job. The more I realize I'm not fit to be a pastor of this church. The more that I realize that, uh, I'll be honest, all right, I don't deserve to be your pastor. What happens? What happens is this, is that when you're going through this thing in your life, you won't understand it because right now, okay, see, right now what we all are in is we're in man's world. Okay? When you're going through the trial, I'm sorry, no matter how spiritual you are, you're not here. You're not in God's mind. You're not in God's mind, so you don't see it. But here's the thing. He promised my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Until you go through God's grace and you go through this, then what happens is, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities and you enter God's world and then the light just clicks like there's no tomorrow. You know what's going on with you right now? You're right here. That's why you feel like it's past your limitation. But here's the thing. In reality, you're not. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 is true. Why? Because this is God's worth. This is his own world. Until you enter this world, then you understand it. You understand it was something I can bear. And also, you realize how much weak you really are. That's why 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 through 10, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in glory, glory in my, my. See, this is not, this is not God's infirmities. This is my infirmities. My infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I thank God for the weaknesses I've been through. And the, so here's the encouragement, okay? The encouragement is this: is that we all get scared about this suffering and all that but you got to realize this it is through mistakes it is through weaknesses and then we realize more and more wow i didn't realize but it's actually sin see now i'm not talking about something dramatic and big you know but you realize more and more that uh that what you're doing now turns out to be sin now that's why the Bible said, abstain from all appearance of evil. Thank God it said appearance of evil, not just evil itself. Because the more you grow in that verse, the more you realize that it is sin now to me. To the other person, it may not be. And if you're a really spiritual person, you're not going to accuse them of doing that as sin. It's about you. You realize I've sinned. And then those people, you truly leave it alone between them and God. Because God knows truly what their limitation is, what they went through. See, you know what the problem with man's world is? Man's world is, is that we all think we're in here together. That's not true. Man's world, if, you're a, if you turn out to be a therapist or a psychiatrist, you'll get it, okay? This is man's world, folks. We all don't have the same thinking together. Everyone is their own world. That's why you got to understand this. That's why, I mean, we can be close. Now, don't get me wrong. We go through similar experiences, right? So then, uh, because we go through similar experiences, we can be kind of close, see? But we can't truly enter into that world. We can't. We can get closer, but we truly can't get into that. So we, we can get somewhat close, but we can't truly get into that world. So that's why it makes so much more sense. The more you grow more spiritually, another thing is this. You don't become more uh, judgmental of others. You become more judgmental of yourself yeah, right. rather than others. That's what happens. And it just dawned on me like that. Here's something interesting, okay? When you become uh, more spiritual for Jesus Christ, what happens is this, it's so easy to look down on people. It's so easy to do that. 
Pastor, really? Yeah, yeah, me too. Man, but you're so nice. You're so loving. Yeah, you know why? Because I try to do this. See, I try to go into the other world, not my world. Try to go to the other world. Then I can get closer. But deep down inside, there's always like, man, you could have done better. Man, you could have done this. But then here's the thing is that I realize this is that uh, the more that I look at myself, see, myself, 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 and the more I enter God's world, then the more I realize I leave this more alone and focus more on me. And this relieves 99%, if not 100% of your fears and worries and concern, is that you only think about yourself, not on others. When you think like that and you leave it to God to take care of others, you get so much peace and joy more than anything else. Right. Don't you think God is more than enough to handle any problem that happens in life? But see, he wants to see you first. That's why he sent, that's why he involved you in the trial. Because he's saying, look, this trial, the reason why you're involved is because you, I want to see how you would respond. It's so amazing when you draw closer to God as a disciple and a, as a minister that, um, did I make any sense just now? I, this, is, this is just more recent, you know. This is just more recent how the Lord dealt with me. But the past weeks after the busy, you, know, you all remember my busy streak. I was like, hey, do, do not disturb, you know, stuff like that, you know. Uh, but then, oh, uh, it's like, it's amazing, so. But anyway, okay, so let's, let's get back to the point right here, okay? So the thing is this, is that this is how you honestly feel, right? And we can't understand that. Yeah. We can't. We can try to, but we'll be very honest. Even a person who says, I understand what you're going through, the person truly cannot understand. You know why? Because that's how you feel. That's how you feel. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for saying you'll support me. Thank you for saying you'll love me and all that. But here's the thing is that, but you can't do nothing more. You don't really go through this while I'm going through. There is one, Hebrews chapter 4. There is one, Hebrews chapter 4. Why do you have to keep looking at others? Why do you have to look at the situation? Why can't you just focus on Jesus? Haven't you heard that ever since the beginning of Sunday school and every sermon? But you just don't understand it. The light bulb don't click until now when you actually go through it. That's why, see, it's important to go through this. When you go through this, you experience this and then this. And then you truly understand why he said that in his book. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. For we have not an high priest, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Man, I just feel like running around the aisles after that. Amen. Amen. Now, I taught you a doctrine about the humanity of Christ, and that's a basic doctrine. But we believe that because of Jesus' human nature, it is possible that he can sin. His God nature cannot sin, but here's the thing. A lot of people just focus on his God nature, but you've got to realize this. He is fully God and fully man. You can't diminish 10% human and 90% God. Both of that will not work. You have to make 100% God, 100% man. And when you believe that, that becomes more comforting for you. A doctrine like that can, if you believe in that doctrine, then it can give you more relief, more peace. Jesus, he truly understands what I'm going through. Oh, he's God, so he can't sin. So no, he doesn't truly understand what I'm going through. No, he truly understands. Because he's 100% human. That fleshy nature could have sinned. He truly understands. That's why he can meet you, you can't meet him. Well, it's just his human life, right? He didn't taste everything. Well, you got to realize this. God is omniscient. Don't deny 100% God, too. Don't you think he knows everything a person went through as well? Mm. So not only does he know, he actually went through it. This is a blessing about God. So that's why you got to realize this. Sure, you know, the pastor, the brethren, and, you know, the greatest preachers in the world, your parents, your best friend. I'm, I'm including even lost people too. You'd be surprised how much of those people can be a comfort to you. Yeah, even lost people, you'd be surprised. 
It shouldn't be. It should be the safe Christian. But you'd be surprised how much a lo the lost person would do a better job than a safe Christian. Because safe Christians can be one of the most wicked, saddest people on the planet. You'd be very surprised. All right? You'd be very surprised about that. Okay? But anyway, the point is this. The point is, is that we can all comfort you. But the thing is this. There's only one who truly understands. And you got to keep only looking at him, not at others, not at the situation, not anything else. You just got to look at him. Amen. When I think like that, you truly have an attitude like, I don't care what happens after this. Amen. What, if the, what if this whole church, you know, drops into the pit of hell? Well, as King David said, if I make my bed in hell, thou art there. <laughs> you have to have that kind of feeling, that kind of thinking that I'm truly at the bottom, and then you go to God in prayer. But then, see, you don't believe in this. You don't have faith in this. I mean, there is something deep down inside that does, but then it's like, it's not truly that kind of faith. But see, that's why this verse is important. My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. You just got to go through this. And then, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. Now I can believe there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. And when you look behind you, you realize... I'm not the only one who's going through this trial. It is so easy. Can I say this? And I'm going to say this. I'm, I want to do this as a comfort and encouragement, but also as a little bit of a rebuke so that it can, because the flesh, the flesh is so weak and wicked and so unknowledgeable and ignorant. So let me just kick the flesh a little bit, huh? Let me just kick this flesh because I'm kicking myself right here too. This flesh, the thing about this flesh is this, is that, we think that we're the only one that goes through the trial nobody can understand. See, man's world, see? I'm past my limitation. Until you go through it, right? Until you enter here, right? And then you look behind you. And then God's going to show you more things. And then God's going to show you other people. And they're going to say, uh, I mean, I had some, I mean, it's not really an encouragement sometimes, but it can be sometimes an encouragement. Sometimes preacher will say, you know, well, hey, you know, I went through this and this and this. I mean, you're telling me that's your suffering, you know? And then my flesh is like, but you don't really understand what I'm going through. I didn't tell you every detail, you know? And it's partially true. They don't truly understand what I'm going through. But then they're partially right as well when I look behind me. And then I go, you know what? It's not just me. There are so many people out there who have it worse than me. Yeah. And I can claim the promise of 1 Corinthians 10, 13. That's no temptation taken you. Let's look at Matthew chapter 16. This was at the, uh, actually, I guess this is, I hate it when you guys keep saying this, but I guess this is God pushing me beyond the limit so he can enter me here so I can gain power at the end. But I kind of hate it when I say I forgot my notes and you're like, man, praise God. And I'm like, dude, dude, shut up. <laughs> and I'm like, no, don't get me wrong, I get encouraged. I appreciate your encouragement, like, so it motivates me to preach and teach, you know, with confidence, so I appreciate that. But see, this is my world, my flesh at the same time is going, no, just shut up, you know? I, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for a day I'm going to fluke. I'm just waiting for that day I'm going to fluke. But uh, this teaching tonight, this is not from notes. This is just from God at the moment. So, anyways, uh, but you see, let's go to Matthew 16. Matthew chapter 16. Uh, let's see right here. And then uh, we'll look at verse... Mm, sorry about that. Uh, verse 17. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven... So you understand that Jesus Christ, he is speaking to Simon Peter right here, and he's telling him that you got to realize his flesh and blood did not reveal it to you. I'm the one that revealed it to you. That's why in verse 18, and I say also unto thee that, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. So notice right here that Peter, he has the honor where Jesus Christ gives him two keys to deal with uh, the Jews as well as the Gentiles. Now, Jesus Christ, who does he build his church on? Is it Peter or Jesus Christ? It's Jesus Christ as the rock, right? All right, if you said Peter, you Catholic, repent and get right with God. But I'm just, 
Some of you are new to this. You're like, oh, I didn't know that before. Well, hey, you know, don't worry about that, all right? That's why it's called studying and growing, right? Yeah. <laughs> all right, but anyway, the thing is this. So why would Jesus put Peter within this line? Because when you put Jesus Christ as a foundation and you go closer to him, you're getting closer to him. It's really simultaneous together. That's why truly... When we suffer, we're partaking in the sufferings of Jesus Christ as well, as the Bible says. The church, cannot, uh, the church cannot be conquered, right? Because the foundation is Jesus. And if Peter clings on to Jesus, that foundation, the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. You can win any trial. You can conquer everything. You got to realize this. But that's when you go through this and go to him go through this and go to him go through this go to him I know this is the same old thing and everyday trial you feel that okay but this is so you hear this old saying but it is never failing and it is so true Amen. let's look at several other passages let's look at Luke chapter 9 please Luke chapter 9 the price of being a disciple the price of being a minister Let's look at Luke chapter 9. And then uh, we'll see right here at verse. Um, so like I said, this was all at the moment, right? So <laughs> let's see right here. I'm, I'm going up. Ah, thank you, brother. Amen. Amen. So there's a flu uh, fluke now, I guess. <laughs> I just flunked right there. <laughs> okay. Anyways. Okay, so it's, uh, it looks like I forgot the verse, but um, if any of you know the verse, uh, I th I'm pretty sure it's at Matthew. But Jesus told Simon Peter that when he told him, when, Jesus, when Peter confessed that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, Jesus Christ told Peter that actually that flesh and blood didn't reveal it to you. And Jesus also said this, I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail, and the adversary wants you. That's what Jesus Christ uh, told Simon Peter actually. So you got to realize this, is that Jesus Christ, when uh, he told Simon Peter that Satan would desire to have you and sift you as wheat, but I prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. That verse is so important. Your faith fail not. You have to go through this. It can't fail. You have to go through, 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 through. You have to go through that. And then you get power over the adversary. When you fight the adversary, it's not over him, it's through it. And then you get over him at the end. Yes, sir? Uh, Luke 22, thank you, thank you. All right, Luke chapter 22. We'll look at verse 38, is that right? 31. 31, all right. Luke chapter 22, verse 31. Thank you so much for helping, church. So notice right here it says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, Behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Isn't that an encouragement? So you have to go through it, and then it's not over it, it's through it. You don't conquer over your temptation, over the trial. It's through it. And then, once you go through it, then you conquered over it. See? That's the thing. So uh, right here, then what happens? Verse 32, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. He converts, he changes, he sees the light now. So I'm saying this as a practical application. But a more doctrinal application is this last line, strengthen thy brethren. You know what happens after that? You become the person right here tonight at uh, 7.32 p.m. telling the other brethren, about what they're going through because you went through it and then you strengthen them. Power. That's the price yep. of power. Yes, sir. Do you want the power of God? Amen. You got to understand the price. Price. When you go through this and you can get victory. So this is extremely important now. When you're going through this world, that's why when you go through it, it's extremely important that you yourself, see, not the other, it's you yourself that is purely cleansed. 
including you, Pastor, every single time. Every single time. You know what I do first? This is what I always do first. Ready for this? I do myself first before anybody else. I always do myself. That's what keeps me humble, and that's what keeps me uh, non-critical. That also keeps me gracious, and that also keeps me non-compromising. And that also helps me to encourage the people going through the trial and the hardship and not look down on it, and not feel like that, hey, you don't know my pain that I'm going through, now I have to help your pain that you're going through, and then, <laughs> see that? No, 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 no. It's you yourself that's purely cleansed. Even if I feel like this is so important and so eye-opening, even if I know for a fact, do I know my enemies are wrong? Yes, I do. I know my enemies are wrong. I don't apologize for what I did. I know that for a fact. But what I still do is look at myself. And when I look at myself, this is good stuff, amen, all right? Amen. The, the enemy should be saying amen, too. I, I'm, I'm giving them the huge benefit right here, right? All right. Anyways, when I look at myself more, that, man, you know, I know that what I did was not wrong. But, you know, when I'm super duper, self-reflecting myself and entering here, then I realize more and more, you know what? I could do that way better. I can say it this way better. And you know what? At that moment, at that time, that was used of God. That was not wrong. But I do know this. The Lord's taking me to a different level here, Amen, a different stage here. Yeah, that's good, I can't remain. You know what's a sin? If you remain the way you are. That's what sin. Not what you did before, okay? Because you, 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 you uh, here's the thing. When you feel like that, uh, I, uh, I did not sin, I'm right with God, then you cannot grow more in power. When you grow more in power, it's when you're more critical of yourself, when you're more humble, and then you enter more of this world after that. You don't want to stay in this world, amen. See, you don't want to stay in this world. You want to enter into this world. That's what I do. I sincerely pray and hope to God that as I continue pastoring in my future pastoring of this church and my future videos, people can truly see more. You know what's a blessing for people online? I really appreciate it when they say this. Sometimes you might feel hurtful because you're like, I didn't do anything wrong back then. But actually, it's actually a compliment because they're seeing something else in you. People, I appreciate when they say online, I see how you've grown so much in the Lord. When I look at your old videos and look at your new your ones, it's so encouraging and uplifting to see how much you've grown, Pastor. And I'm like thinking to myself, man, you're like belittling me. I mean, I didn't do anything wrong back then. It's like you're saying that I did something wrong back then. No, 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 no. No, no, that's not what I'm thinking now. What I'm thinking now is I didn't do anything wrong back then, but it will be wrong if I stay that way. That's good. God uses you more when you change yourself more. Uh, this, uh, why, why am I saying all this? Because when you become a, dis this is so valuable as a disciple and a minister. Because it's so easy to have so much knowledge. And that's why there's always splits, divisions. It's so easy to remain loving and social to people and then compromising. And because of that, you also don't grow more in the Lord. You know what you got to do? Both of those things are flesh. You got to enter into God's world, not your world. Well, what's the right thing for me to do? I, I have to be more knowledge here. I have to be more loving here. What are you telling me to do? No, no, just go to Jesus. That's it. Go to Jesus. Just go to Jesus. Let's make this simple, shall we? Let's keep things simple, stupid. As, uh, as one wise elder told me, Brother Chuck always told me about that saying, you know, I always say this, just keep things simple, stupid. And that's been such a very helpful quote whenever he would say that. Amen. Sometimes Chuck would say a lot of complicated things, and then he said, hey, uh, there's a saying, let's just keep things simple, stupid. So then he'll yeah. talk simply after that. <laughs> but then the thing is this, is that uh, simply is this. Are you right with God right now? I'm not sure, Pastor. Good, then start self-reflecting. Well, you know, that didn't turn out to be wrong. Okay, what are you going to do after that? I'm going to stay this way. 
Is that really what God wants? Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Not doing what's wrong. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Then you realize that's sin. It's when you realize, okay, do you know when you realize more of the good? This is, you, you got to realize this. Oh, man, I don't like this. Neither do I. I hate this. But this is your only window of opportunity for God to show you something on what's more holy. And to gain more power. And to draw closer to him. Don't waste that opportunity. That's what Satan wants you to do where your faith fails, where you can't go through, and then you can't experience that fruit, that blessing at the end. That's the thing about this is that um, the more that you, now let's keep things simple, right? So let's go back right here, this incident. Okay, so uh, did you do something wrong? Are you right with God about this? Well, you know, this incident calls for it, and I'm looking at myself, I, I had to say it, I had to do this, and the other person is truly wrong right there. No, 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 look at who, remember, who, 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 who first, who first, this is so important. This is so important. So important. You, you, and when you think like that, okay, did I do something wrong, Lord? And then you pray to the Lord, you start self-reflecting. And what's going to happen is this, and I know this happens, if you're going to be honest, but your flesh always played the dirty advocate. When you start thinking, your flesh feels a hurt of, this could be wrong. Uh -huh. That's something that you should do. Even though you don't have to, that's something you should do. And the flesh hates that. And because the flesh hates it, you're like, I can't do that, Lord. you got to understand where I'm going. Ah, then you're reverting not to here. You're reverting back to where, friend? Ah. Ah. Amen. Amen. You know, I always pray to the Lord, there's nothing wrong to be vulnerable, weak, because that's where God can begin to work with you. What did Hebrews chapter 4 say? He cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. And then the next verse, it says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may find grace to help in time of need. So what do I do? Pastor Kim, 10 years, hundreds of souls saved. A lot of subscribers online. Man, you're a soldier. Man, all these enemies are attacking you. Trials are attacking you. And then here you are, you know, without a family, and you can do this, you can do that, you can do this, you can do that. But uh, no, you know where Pastor Kim is? Still at his bedroom, falling flat on his face before the Lord and saying, God, I'm so scared. God, I'm so weak. God, I am nothing. And then when that flesh comes up and says, oh, you can handle this, and you should do this way and that way, and then... Then I say, get thee behind me, Satan. Amen. So then what I do is, God, I'm nothing. God, I'm dirt. God, will you please help me? And this is how I'm feeling, and I'll give him everything that I feel and how I honestly think. And I would say, God, I really feel like it's unfair. God, I really feel like that you can't understand what I'm going through. God, can't you? And then I would try to explain in my situation, can't you understand what I'm going through right here? Can't you send me a little bit of grace right here and stuff like that? And then I would pray, and then I would pray. And then you know what? A feeling of comfort floods all over my soul, and I feel so awesome. No, that's not what happens. See, that's what people expect. No, what happens is God already heard you. You go through. And some invisible power that you cannot feel is carrying you through that because God knows your heart and you're trying. It's when you stop, that's when God stops using you. But when you try, oh, I made mistakes, I'm weak, and yeah, I even sinned. No, keep going through. Then it gets cleaned off, see that? Cleaned off. This is why, you got to understand this. You know how I started online? It had to begin here. Do you see how my adversaries literally take five-second clips to really crucify me? You saw that, right? But how did I survive still online? And you know what? It doesn't matter how perfect I am. They'll still find this in me, right? Aha, uh aha, -huh, uh -huh, see that? But compared to a lot of other preachers who are afraid of the internet because of what 
they might show right here. The thing is this, is that, see, I can go online. The Lord can use me on that one because I was willing to clean this. That's what you got to understand, cleaning. And when you clean that more and more and more, you experience such, you enter here. And when you enter here, you truly believe his power. You go, man, God, you truly me meant it that I can go through this. You truly meant it that there is blessing to go through the trial. And you know what happens? That's why preachers are preaching to you to every day. It is worth going through the trial. And they'll tell you their fruit. They'll tell you their blessing. Do you know why they can say that? Because they went through it and they understand it. But here's the thing. You as a hearer cannot understand that. You can't because you have not went through what he went through. Until you went through what that preacher went through, then you truly understand what he meant, that there is truly a blessing, there's truly fruit. Do you know why people don't want to surrender to Jesus Christ? Because they don't believe in his tender care. They don't believe the worth of the blessing, the worth of the power. Here's another thing that God opened my eyes a long time ago. Haven't you always had the desire of, I wish I could know what would happen to me 10 years in the future, you know, uh, with this ministry? If, I, if you told me when I was 19 that, hey, about 10 years later, this is going to be your fruit, this is going to be all this, it would have helped me so much more to go through the trial, you know, if I knew about those fruits. That's wrong. You know why? Because if God showed me my future, I would be afraid of what kind of trial and temptation I go through. And I'm like, God, I can't do it, and I quit. That's why God doesn't show it to you. That's why God doesn't show it to you. People online in the camera over there. God doesn't show it to you. You know why God doesn't show it to you? Because he truly is tender, loving, and caring. So he takes you step by step. Oh, I heard about those martyrs who gave their life for Jesus Christ and burned at the stake. I can't surrender all to Jesus. This helped me a long time ago. Like Dr. Upman said, are you willing to be willing? That's good right there. See, you can't surrender all, but are you willing? You can't be willing to surrender all, but are you at least willing to be willing? Trust me, that would take you miles. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> when I did that, the Lord took me through a journey. And you know what? He didn't just pound it all on me like this and I quit it. It was always what he... Because does God lie or he doesn't lie? He never lies, right? He puts it to my measure. Romans chapter 12, right? He always puts it at my measure. And he tries to get the best out of me. That's why you can't become the greatest preacher within one day. Amen. Oh, I want to be like you, Pastor Kim. You know, 120-some thousand subscribers, stuff like that. And that's why some of these proud, arrogant, so-called Bible believers, that's why they always whine about the trials they go through. They criticize everybody. Yep. How about that? That's the internet world. No, God gives that your measure. And then if you're always humble and realize, see, you got to be humble. See, this is so important. You got to be humble. You, you, look, this one, you cannot overlook this about you. Humility is the key of everything. And when you're hu humble, then what does God do? He exalts you. First Peter chapter 5, is that not what he said? If you're humble, I'll exalt you. So you always have to think about you, 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 yourself first in everything and anything. And when you think about that, I can't tell you so much how much it'll take you a mile. I know you can be right. I know you have the right. I know the pain is so great, but I understand some of that too. And you didn't went through when I went through either. And guess what? First Corinthians 10, 13. There is no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. So Adoniram Judson is screaming that right now. William Carey is screaming that right now. Ten-year-olds who are burnt at the stake for Jesus Christ are screaming that right now. You're not the only one. If we got the blessing, we got the power, and we believe that it was worth it to go through the suffering, you think we're all lying to you? You think Jesus is lying to you? No. No. Man, you're getting really emotional, Pastor. Yes, sir, because I want God's power, Amen. and I want you to have it as well. 
I want you to have it as well. So crucify self. That is extremely important. Empty self. And then rely everything on God. And don't think about these things here. Just you and God. That's it. Can, can I stress so much how much peace you truly experience then after that? How much joy? It's like everything that's going on around you. The lightning flashing. This is what's going on. If I was Simon Peter then. If you're the one walking by faith. When the wave is crashing, the lightning is flashing, and then, you know, literally gunshots and error are going right past your ear, you don't see those things, and you only look at Jesus, what happens? You're totally oblivious. And then you go, Jesus, I see your wonderful face. Jesus, I'm going closer to you. Man, you're so, you're so wonderful, Jesus. I can't realize, man, when I see your face, how beautiful you are more and more and more. And then when you go like this, literally, no matter how great the pain is, you don't even see that pain. The price of discipleship and the price of a minister. But this is extremely important. It only can begin with you. Now, here's the thing, friend. What mistakes are you making? I didn't say your sin. What mistakes? What are your weaknesses? Well, I didn't fall for it yet. Oh, well, maybe you are going through it right now. What are your weaknesses? And yes, what are your sins? As one preacher said, God cannot use you if you have sin in the camp. You know what is extremely important? What is extremely important is that you repent of that sin and you get right with God because sin cannot go together with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen especially if it's a major sin and a grievous sin, don't you dare think that you can play with God. Be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth. That shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh of the flesh reap corruption. Yeah. But he that soweth to the spirit shall reap what? Life everlasting. He that confesses and forsaketh the sin shall have what? Mercy. Isn't David the greatest king and Paul the greatest Christian when those two committed really heinous, wicked sins as well? So don't think that you can mock and gamble and play with God. And you know what? You, can, you know one thing I learned about sin? Sin not only fools people around you. And yes, you can even fool the greatest, smartest pastor. Yeah. But guess what? You know what sin fools? This is the greatest deception. It fools you. It fools you. And when it fools you, you messing with your mind, and you feel like you can get away with it. You feel like you're not in the wrong, and then Satan takes advantage of that. And he takes advantage of that and leads you further down the road that you can't go back. So you know what you need to do? You need to repent of the sin and get right with God. That is so important. Now, if it especially affects the church, you got to realize this. you got to realize this. This affects... You got to realize, see, we always think about this. When it comes to sin, it's just me and sin. No, when it comes to sin, it's you and others. Now, you know what's really funny? When it's you and God, when it's you and God, you think it's you, God, and others. Yeah. But then when it's like uh, you and sin, you're like, oh, it's just me and sin. Did I just make any sense just now? When it comes to, here, let me explain right here. Keep things simple, stupid, right? <laughs> let, me, let me get right here. So when it comes to you trying to serve God, you always involve incidents and others around you. And you always put all these things in your head, and then you go, man, this, that, this, that, this, that, this, that. And that's why you blind yourself to Jesus. You only see the storm. You only see the trial. You only see the thunder. You only see the sins and the flaws of others. But when it comes to sin, you know what's so amazing? You only see you and sin. Yeah. You don't see how it hurts somebody else. You don't see how it hurts your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your own church, and your own life also. And when I became a pastor taking care of a church, I realized this. Even if what I didn't do is a sin, it can hurt somebody else. Yeah. And when I realized that, man, isn't our flesh so dis... We were born wrong. Everyone was born wrong. I was born gay, so I cannot change. Yeah, you're born wrong, and we get on them. But guess what? Every single one of us is born wrong, too. Amen. We were born with a wrong brain function, bless God. Amen. That is our problem. Yeah. So it is so important you transform that brain. And the only way that brain can transform is through that word of God. It's through preaching. It's through going through this. And when you go through this, man, it's such a whole different world out there. 
And then you truly realize, God, who am I? Nothing without Jesus Christ. The Lord transformed my life completely. I can't tell you that much. Lord willing, Lord willing, Sunday I will preach something better than this, actually. Lord willing. But this is so important. So here's something important. When sin involves, when you're messing with sin, here's something, here's something important, okay? When you are messing with sin, look, we don't want to know every single sin that you're committing, okay? There are things that sin is personally for you. But if it involves others, and you clearly see that, this has to be confessed and repented of immediately. It has to. You might say, why is that? Because sin does that. It always involves others somehow. I don't want everyone coming to me after church is over. Oh, man, I just had a dirty thought. I just said a cuss word and stuff like that. Look, look, look I'm not your priest, okay? <laughs> don't confess your sin to me, and I'm going to forgive you, okay? I'll probably take my water bottle and sprinkle you three times and tell you to say, Hail Mary, okay, <laughs> if you're going to do that. But look, here's, but look, every one of us, but here's the thing. When you pray between you and God, you got to look at this. Okay, so it's just me and God now. I'm going to, okay, what am I doing wrong, right? Then once these things are cleaned off, okay? Listen now, this is important. You ready for this? You need to hear this. When it's you and God, what happens? Okay, this is cleaned. This is cleaned and no, it's not a sin. No, it's not a sin. Okay, it's a sin, God. <laughs> now, you know what the next step is? Remember, sin always involves others, right? Okay, if I get others involved, would that make it worse? Or, you know, should it be repented of? Should I confess? No, it's not going to, no, it shouldn't be done. No, pastor shouldn't have it taken care of. No, then don't do it. But if it does, then you need to realize that sin always involves others. And you have to confess it with others. You have to do that. Have to, have to, have to. You have to. Because sin doesn't, don't be blind now. Sin is always not just you and, you and sin. Sin is, no. sin is, sin, you, and others. Yeah, that's good. All right? So if it plainly involves others, you got to get involved. All right? You have to. It has to be repented of. But what if I, now here's something important. This is encouraging, right? Man, this is good stuff and all that. But how do I do this right? Like, for example, you know, like, let's say you're messing with a sin, right? Well, I don't know if I should tell pastor about it, you know? Oh, well, you know, it involved another person. It might cause more problems. I'll tell him. And then you just slip up, and it actually turned out best that you didn't mention, right? So that's a good, genuine mistake, right? Here's something you got to understand. Don't worry. See, that's the problem with people. They don't trust God. It's you and who? God. Always think that. Pastor Kim, you can... I thank God for the internet for pointing out Pastor Kim's flaws because no matter how Superman he is, he is the greatest evidence that you can always find mistakes. But you can never deny I have the power of God as well. Because you know why? I was willing to go through this and it's only going through this that God can make me more perfect. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. I will glory in my infirmities. Don't I believe the promise? All things work together for good to them that love God. And that includes the wrong things that I've done. I trust in him. When I trust in him, he can never go wrong with me. Amen. So yeah, sure, I'll make mistakes, but I'm going to do it in confidence. So when you preach and when you teach and when you fellowship and when you pastor and when you do these kind of methods of cleaning yourself, don't worry you should only worry when you're not focusing you and God, thinking about you, what I should clean. That's when you should worry. Amen. When humility is out of the picture, that's when you should worry. And you should have every right to worry, and you better repent and get right with God, because one day Satan's going to take advantage of that and ruin your life. But if you pass that, if you did confess it before God, and you're trying to do all these things, you have every no good reason to never fear. If you fear, then that's a sin. Well, I fear just now I messed up. Don't worry about that. See, just trust God now. <laughs> just trust God. Because as long as it's just you and God. And that filtering process, guess what? It never ends. Maybe that will encourage you. Oh, I, I want to do this right. I want to say this right. I want to perform it right. And guess what? This pastor is probably going to mess up. And probably he's going to mess up sometime big and people are going to misunderstand. But who am I looking at again? I got to look at just me and God, and that can never go wrong.
And then God, he'll filter out my mistakes, my wrongdoings, my weaknesses. Now, I'm not going to moan and groan about them. I'm just going to simply know, you know what? I do realize how these things were putting me down. So now I know for a fact I should never go back to those things again. Remember, it's not accounted as sin until you have knowledge of it. So God's not going to smack you in the face if you've done something wrong. Like a baby, baby cries. Ah, you know, that's so annoying to a person. You know, baby, does a baby understand, have the comprehension that that's wrong and disrupting your parent at the middle of the night? No, because God knows the baby's weakness limitation. So God will carry you through that. He totally understands. He'll pull you through. But here's the thing is that when you mature and you start to gain knowledge, you better stop crying now. Yeah. We don't want to hear a wah-wah at midnight at church in the middle of Bible study if you're 30 years old, okay? Ah, like that. We don't want to hear that. All right? You got the knowledge now. Now you're taking account of for. That's the point. See, with you and God, you don't get the knowledge until you go through this. And when you go through this, then you get the knowledge. And when you get the knowledge and you... When you go through this, that's when you attain that measure God gave to you and you gain the knowledge, and then your testimony goes up. And then you truly understand the price after that. But remember this, testimony is a million dollars, friend. That's why it is so important you got to understand these have to be filtered. That includes your pastor. Whatever Satan has in plan for me in the future, I'm very honest. I do get scared. He's a very powerful adversary. But I'll be very honest with you. Until I went through this, I realized this. God is patting my head and saying, son, <laughs> everything's going to be all right. Amen. I messed up here. I messed up there. Oh, didn't you confess that to me two days ago? Yeah, Lord. Then shut up, man. It's, it's taken care of by my hand. <laughs> it's when I didn't confess it, when I didn't correct it, then I should be worried. See? Amen. Amen. I hope the, the teaching was a blessing to you. Okay, let's close with a word of prayer. Uh, I'm surprised how long I went on this. God, my Father, my flesh is lying when I say this, but I love you, Lord, and I hope you understand that. I love that uh, you've given me a greater appreciation of loving you, and not only that, once I loved you, I started to love others even more. And that includes even the enemies who accused me online. I will not back down in sarcasm, criticism, non-compromise. I will continue on. That's what you call me to do. But you increase my love for them. It's amazing, Lord. And you've increased my love for the weak brethren and the stronger brethren more than me as well. You've increased my love for your children and for even lost souls. Because you said in your word that if you love me, then, but you hate your brother, then you don't really love me. And not only that, didn't you love the world enough to die for them? How can I understand your true love if I don't go through that? So that's why I'm saying this, Lord, is that uh, I love you and I love others. Thank you so much for showing me that. And uh, thank you so much for uh, that because of my love for others, I'm able to tell my experience to these people and may these people be blessed of what they heard tonight. Uh, bless the prayer meeting, the Bible study after this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Out of all the wrong doctrines that's happening in our day and age at the last days of the church as the apocalypse is coming even closer, the point of all this, friend, is that you won't be even able to grow in knowledge of the truth, in Bible-believing truth, until you get saved first. The most important question you have to ask yourself after watching all this is if you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you're going to go to heaven? Perhaps one of these wrong doctrines have affected you and you had the improper way of salvation. As you have seen before, the way to get saved is very simple. It's only simply salvation by grace alone, without works, through the Lord Jesus Christ in this Christian day and age. If you're not sure that you can go to heaven after you die, it's very simple to get saved. First of all, you have to understand that because of sin, God is a holy God, and He cannot even allow 1% of sin into heaven. So He has to judge sin with a burning hell. So it is very important that you got to realize how serious sin is, and you must repent. You might say, well then, I guess I have to clean up all my sins. I guess I have to go to church. I guess I have to get baptized. I have to, I have to be a good person. 
No, my friend, good works can never save you. Jesus is God who died, buried, and resurrected so that he can pay all the sins for you. You don't have to pay a single sin for yourself. So all you have to do as a repentant sinner is turn to what he did on the cross alone for your salvation. You might say, well, pastor, I do believe only on what Jesus did on the cross to save me. That's great. Then all you have to do is just say that to the Lord. You might say, well, preacher, I haven't prayed much before in my life. I don't know really how to say it to God. Can you help me out? Sure, you can say it this way. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. As I repent, I put my faith that Jesus is God and that he died, buried and resurrected so that his blood can wash away my sins. I put my faith in that alone to save me, not my good works. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Congratulations, my friend, if you meant it with all your heart that you put your faith only on what Jesus did on the cross through his blood to save you, then you are saved. It's that simple, my friend. Now, my friend, it is important to grow in Bible-believing truth. You now know the truth. What are you going to do about it? As the apocalypse comes even more closer and Satan's about his, to set up his kingdom even more, there are many souls dying and going to hell, and even many more churches out there who don't know right and wrong doctrine. It is up to you now on what to do. And go to our resources site, www.bbcenglish.org, and click on the resources link over there, and it'll give you everything that you need to grow in grace. The next step of your journey now is up to you. We've done our part giving you this movie. All of it was done for free by the love of the people. God bless you.